He was hovering. Now he's going to execute a landing. It's kind of amazing when the stuff works like it's supposed to. Hello again, and welcome back to the Hobby King New York studio. Today I've got another episode in our HK Pilot Mega series. Today I'm talking about this, the S500 Quad. Now, you guys may have seen recently a product video that we put out, our product profile we put out, for this cool combo kit for this quad where you get a controller and the motors and the frame and everything in one box. It's a very cool kit for a beginner, great if you want to build your first quad, but it's something you're going to outgrow pretty quickly if you're doing this stuff, or maybe you've already outgrown it and you want to do some video and move on to that. That's where this comes in. I'm going to show you guys how to put the HK Pilot Mega 2.7 system on this copter and set it up kind of the way that those ready to fly quads that you can buy are set up where you'll have some basic modes including an acro mode, a stabilize, and a GPS hold mode, as well as a kind of bailout switch for return to launch when you get in some trouble. I'll show you which parts of the HK Pilot kit you need to do that, take you through Mission Planner, let's get started. So what are you going to need to accomplish this transformation? You're going to need the Mission Planner software, which you can go and download. Go ahead and just jump online, search for APM Mission Planner, and you'll find a link for the latest version. Click and download that and install it. If you need more information on that, go back and check out both my intro to this series as well as the Rover episode. I don't want to kind of repeat all that stuff every time I do one of these. Now, what parts are you going to need? Your HK Pilot Master Set. You're going to want to take the main flight board, of course, right here. You're also going to need the telemetry radios, there's going to be two of these in the kit. You're going to mount one on the copter, and one you'll keep to plug into your computer. You're going to want the GPS with external compass module, and you're going to want the power module included in the kit. We're not going to make use of the OSD at this time. Setting that thing up is pretty complicated. I'm going to give you guys kind of a dedicated episode to that later. So guys, the first thing that we need to do, just like with our other previous HK Pilot installs, is get the correct firmware loaded onto our main flight controller. This is the only time that we're gonna have the USB cable connected from the computer directly to the flight controller. After we've done this, we can accomplish everything else using the two-way radios with the copter untethered from the computer. So, open up Mission Planner, get it you know, loaded onto your screen, and you're gonna plug your board using the included USB cable into the PC. Windows will sing to you if you're using Windows and tell you that you've plugged in the USB device. Give that a second, you'll get some flashy lights and stuff on the controller. Now, in Mission Planner, don't click Connect yet. Just go right over here to the Initial Setup tab. Click on that, and you're gonna see a tab that says Install Firmware. Click on that first, and the software will download the latest versions of all the firmware directly from the uh, APM file repository. If you click on here, you'll see the third icon over is a great big picture of a quadcopter. Click on that guy, it'll say, are you sure you wanna load that firmware? Tell it yes and it will proceed to do so. You'll see a green progress bar, it'll show a download, and then it'll read the hex file back, confirm that the firmware is okay, and finally give you a done message. You go ahead and click okay. So that's it for installing the firmware. Now that that's done, we can disconnect this thing from the uh, computer and go ahead and take you through installing the hardware onto the machine. Over to the copter itself now. If you take a look here, you can see I've mounted the main flight controller right on the top of the copter. There probably is room, if you're feeling saucy, to squeeze that guy in between the two plates and install everything kind of compactly inside the copter, but you probably have to cut some of the material to make room for wires and stuff. I feel like getting into that. So what I've done here is just mount it on the top. I've got the GPS mounted back here on a pole to raise it up away from interference, kind of keep it away from, uh, you know, the, the compass and everything, away from other sources of magnetic interference and power. Over here on this side, this is the telemetry radio system. And over here is my FPV subsystem. Now the FPV transmitter and camera are not connected to the APM unit in any way at this time. They're just there to reference your camera position when you fly so you can kind of see what you're shooting. Right on the front of the copter here you can see I've mounted my FR Sky 8 channel receiver. And I've connected the wires, all eight channels, one through eight, directly from the receiver to the input side of the APM unit. So other than the receiver and of course the APM components themselves, the other thing you need to connect is obviously the motors. Here are the four motor leads from the ESCs to the APM unit. The order is a little unconventional with APM. It's actually motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. So make sure you connect those in the correct order. Again, that's one, two, three, four. Uh, if you have any issues with that, or if you want to see kind of a connection diagram for all this stuff, don't forget, you can go to copter.argupilot.com 
And that will show you all of this stuff in detail. It has some clickable stuff you can go through and make sure you get all your hardware plugged in correctly. Also helps you a little troubleshooting. The astute among you will notice this wire here. That is actually just a spare lead connected to my LED here on the back of the copter so I have some orientation when I'm not flying FPV. So by the power of video, I went ahead and let Stuart take a look at some of this footage for this episode ahead of time. And he really only had one major question for me, and that was, uh, you know, he was concerned that with the APM board itself right here, that I wasn't really going into enough detail about where all the little things plug into this board. They aren't necessarily marked super well, so I am gonna follow up on that and show you real quick how it all works. You have your APM board, of course, and you're gonna plug those different accessories that I described into it, that being the compass, the power module, and this cable that is the communication cable for the two-way radios. Uh, now, for the most part, the things are pretty clearly marked here on the board. You've got GPS labeled there. That's for the main GPS connector. What's not so clearly labeled is that this little connector on the side is for the compass connector on your GPS. That's what that other little pair of pins is. So that's GPS, that's compass, GPS, compass, All right? That plugs in there. Now, the next one here is the power module, which has this little cable sticking out of it. That plugs in right here where the board is labeled PM. It's not the prime minister, it is indeed the power module. Plugs in right there, gets you going on the power module. The other unit that we were gonna use is actually the hardest to locate that's the 3D radio option, or the, uh, sorry, the two-way telemetry radio option. There's actually tiny lettering way down in that hole right there that says 3DR radio, which is the plug for your radio connector. For some reason, you can't see that. I didn't even know it was there until I really looked at this thing the other day. The advantage being that it is actually the only pin or the only plug on this board with the right number of pins for that connector. So you just match the number of pins on the connector to the right port on the board, that guy for the radio. That's all the functions we plugged in. Get that stuff plugged in, you can jump right back in where we were earlier in the series. Kind of pretend I didn't say that. Cool. So guys, for the next part of this, we're gonna go ahead and take the props off of the copter and we're gonna get into Mission Planner itself. I love these things because they are self-tightening. Props, taking them on and off is a breeze. Normally having to remove your props to do any kind of work on your copter is a pain in the butt. In this case, it is very much not. Now, to get the props off, the rest of our stuff through Mission Planner is actually gonna be done via the two-way telemetry radios that I have right here. So we don't have to tether the copter to the computer. It's gonna make it easier when we do things like calibrate the compass, we're gonna tumble this thing around a whole bunch, and we can do all those steps right now. So, first things first, guys, go ahead and power up your radio, which at this point you have already bound to your receiver, whichever radio you're going to use. Welcome to the TX Acro. That never gets old. And, Plug in the copter itself. It's good to power everything on, starting with your radio and the copter. And just for giggles here, go ahead and turn on the FPV receiver. Be as meta as possible. You guys can watch my camera guys work while I work. So. <laughs> Uh, next step, guys, is to connect this thing to the computer using your two-way telemetry module. Oh. So go over to Mission Planner, make sure that you are set to 57.6 baud in the upper right corner there. Make sure you've got the right COM port for your little device and click connect. This will connect the computer to the copter via the wireless link. Get you started the Mission Planner. All right, so now that we're in Mission Planner, we're gonna ignore most things. You should load up in this flight data screen, but we're not ready for that just yet. Go on over to Initial Setup. You will see the tabs Install Firmware, Wizard, Mandatory Hardware, and Optional Hardware. We're gonna skip the Wizard, we're gonna go right down to Mandatory Hardware, and we're gonna work our way through these menus one at a time. Starting with Frame Type. You'll see right here next to frame type, a list of frames. The first picture there shows an X-type quad. That's what you wanna click on. Next one down here is compass. Go ahead and click on compass. You wanna make sure that we pick APM with external compass. That's what we're doing here. Obviously the compass is up here in your GPS unit. And then you're gonna click on live calibration. Now when you click on live calibration, it's gonna ask you to pick the quad up basically and go through and spin it around on all of its different axes, just like you did originally 
with the rover and everything else. That'll calibrate the compass and get everybody going. You need to go through that process. Make sure you do that pretty thoroughly. Spin it a whole lot, get a lot of samples. The more samples you have, the better it's gonna work and the more stable it's gonna be in the long run. Next tab here is accelerometer calibration. Same routine, you're gonna hit the calibrate button and it's gonna ask you to do several things. It's gonna want you to set the copter on its face, on its back and upside down. Each time you do that and click OK, work your way through that menu, you'll be ready to go. Next one down is radio calibration. Now this is pretty important. On this screen, this is where you're gonna take your radio and you should see corresponding movements on screen with the little green bars of everything that's happening with your radio. Verify that all of your channels are working the way you need them to. Now, <clears throat> I pointed out originally that I connected all eight channels to this radio. There are a bunch of functions in APM that you can operate if you have all of your channels connected, but for the way we're using this copter right now, we're only gonna use six of those channels. So make sure that you have one through six working and that the channel five is on a two position switch. The reason for that two position switch I just mentioned is so that you can set your flight modes. The way that we've got this copter set up right now is with three modes, acro, stabilize, and GPS hold called loiter. If you go over here to this flight mode screen, go ahead and flip the switch on your radio and verify that the flight modes correspond on the screen to what you have set in your radio. Verify that on this screen and then hit save modes to save those to the computer. Finally, here's the big reason why we took our props off of this quad. Click on fail safe. You will see when you do that, you get a message that says, ensure the props are not on your quad. They know better than we do. Take those off. You will see here on the fail safe screen, again, you've got a bunch of bars that are showing your radio input signal and showing that everything is functioning that it should. Go over here to these drop down menus and you want to set a few fail safe things. I've got this set up with fail safe, enable always land. Why have I done that as opposed to disable or any of the other options they give you? Uh, I like this setup so that if you lose signal or you lose GPS, the copter lands right away as opposed to trying to return to launch. Basically, the return to launch function is gonna come straight back from wherever it is. I don't like the idea that if I've lost signal, my copter is now coming straight for me. This way, with it set to always land, if you do lose signal on something, the copter is gonna come straight down wherever it is. Now, be aware that means if you lose signal over water or anything like that, you're gonna lose your copter. We've all seen those great videos of dudes dashing into ponds trying to save their drones. Don't be that guy. Don't fly over people. Don't fly over the water. Pay attention. <clears throat> Ah, the other thing you want to make sure is turned on is the battery failsafe. On the battery failsafe, you go in and you set your minimum voltage. In this case, I've got it set to 10 volts. Now that's lower than I would normally ever want my uh, battery to run while I'm flying, but I also have a voltage alarm here on the copter that's going to warn me before I get there. So basically, that's just there so that if I completely ignore my battery voltage alarm and let the pack run way down, the copter's going to take over and land itself rather than drop out of the sky due to loss of voltage. Uh, set those two things, make sure that uh, the two failsafe enable buttons are clicked on, and that's it. Now, next set of menus down here is optional hardware. We're going to go through these real fast. 3DR radio refers to these two way telemetry radios. You shouldn't have to make any changes there unless something's not working with your system and you need to update the firmware. Next down here is battery monitor. That's very important. That's where we set up this little guy. On the battery monitor, we want to make sure that we've set it to monitor voltage and current. We're using a 3DR power module, and we're using that via APM 2.5 plus with 3DR power module. This is also on this screen where you go over and set your battery capacity. In this case, we're using a 3700 milliamp hour three cell zippy compact. This pack plugged in runs a quite a bit of flight time on this thing, probably 10 plus minutes. Should be great even with all the extra weight. Set that here to 3700 milliamp hour. That way the APM system knows when the battery's running out. That's how those fail safes work. So guys, that's it for the initial setup menu. We've done everything we need to do there. Of course, there are more options here. We're not gonna get into those just now with this episode. I will come back later and do an advanced setup, an advanced planning episode that goes into some of the more detailed stuff like waypoints and fences and stuff. But for now, I just wanna set this thing up so you guys can go out and get some cool video. Over to the config tuning tab. It's the next tab to the right after the initial setup. You're gonna come in here now. First tab is flight modes. We've just verified those over in our uh, initial setup, but let's go ahead and double check them. We've got acro, stabilize, and loiter set up as we want. That's great. Those are all working as they should. Next tab down is geofence. For now, that's disabled. This is one of those advanced features that we'll start talking about later. 
Next one down we have here is basic tuning. Now here's where we're gonna do kind of our very easy setup of the copter. This is kind of how you tune your PID inputs and that kind of stuff without having to nerd out and really get into it. This way you can just adjust your sensitivities and what we've done here is I've very slightly reduced the pitch and roll sensitivity. I've increased the RC feel knob, which is a bit like Expo in your radio. I've got the throttle for hover set right at 50%, so right in mid stick should be hover power. And I've got my climb sensitivity turned down a little bit, so if I make a sudden change in the stick, the copper's not gonna rock it straight up. Again, this is all video stuff. I'm trying to make this thing pretty numb and mushy so that it shoots good video. Uh, there is an extended tuning tab here. You can easily get lost in this for days, adjusting minutia of PIDs and whatnot. We're not gonna get into that just now. I will bring you up to speed on all of this in a later episode when we really start locking into this, and I'll explain it just a little bit more when we get to tuning later in this episode. Now, here's our big menu of standard parameters. Now, there's a lot to be set in here and a lot to be changed, but luckily, we're not gonna do much of it this time. So, going right in here, First things first, we have arming check. I've got this set to disabled. I think most of you guys are gonna to wanna to leave this enabled. What does it do? The arming check goes through and checks the copter for the receiver, the accelerometer, the barometer, the compass, and the GPS to make sure all of those things are getting a correct signal before allowing you to arm the copter. Why would you wanna disable that? In this case, I've disabled it based on the GPS so that even if I'm indoors like we are now and I don't have a GPS signal, I can still arm this thing do a little acro mode flying and tuning, uh, both to show you guys and also because I just sometimes do it flying and things indoors where I won't have GPS. If you know you're gonna be using this primarily outdoors or you just wanna be as safe as possible and have the copter as locked in as possible, then leave this enabled so that you can't do anything unless all of those checks are passed. So the only other thing we're gonna change here on the standard parameter screen in Mission Planner is the channel seven option. We'll scroll down and change that to RTL or return to launch. Uh, we're doing that. Normally, you could set that if you wanted to channel 6 or whatever, but the default for your optional channel in APM is channel 7. And in this case, we've set that here on our single position switch on the Tyrannus as our return to launch sort of panic switch. Return to launch. Which will bring this thing back if you get in any kind of trouble and return to launch on purpose. Now, I don't mind that so much as opposed to, you know, the failsafe return to launch where you're not really sure where the copter is or why. This is something you're gonna key yourself. So if you know the copter is over there, but it's out of control, you've lost orientation, and you wanna bring it back, flip your return to launch switch, and in theory, it will come right back to you. So that's it for what we've set up on this copter for right now. Make sure you hit the right parameters button to save everything that you've just done to the copter, and then we can unplug from the PC, take you through how the radio is set up, we'll go out and do some flying. Now, again, I've set this up to resemble the sort of ready to fly quads that you can go out and buy on the market right now. Most of those quads have three standard flight modes. Acro, which is like your flip and flop mode where you can do whatever you want and you have full control over the copter. Stabilize, where it does its best to stay auto leveled and, and not change position. And in this case, loiter, which is a GPS enhanced stabilize, where not only is it trying to hold its position by dead reckoning, but it has GPS to tell it when it's drifting. Those modes are set up here on our main sort of flight control switch here right over the throttle is where I like to put it. We're stabilized and loiter mode, or of course acro when the stick. So when you first plug it in and turn it on, it's in acro mode. Again, that is because I sometimes fly indoors but without the GPS engaged, I like to start that way. Our return to home switch, again, this single position switch. So if we get any major trouble, we've got our kind of panic switch to bring us back. So guys, why have we done all this? Pretty straightforward. We want to take great video. We have our Turnigy Wi-Fi action cam mounted right here in our Q2D gimbal, right on the front of this guy, all stabilized and ready to shoot super cool video. We've got our Fat Shark 600 line uh, camera and transmitter, 250 milliwatt transmitter system here, so you have some reference. Think of this less as FPV for flying the copter and more as FPV through the screen to help frame your shots while you're out there flying. And because that's what we're all here for, Get our props back on this bad boy and go do some flying. Let's do it. So guys, we are out at the flight field. Alex is all goggled up, ready to chase me around. I'm gonna take this thing up, show you guys the different flight modes, show you how things work, then we'll go back to the studio and I'll show you how we got it tuned to the state it's in now. Let's check it out. Here we are in acro mode. 
can see the way this thing is tuned, that's hands off and acro. And as you can see, even hands off and acro mode, this thing is very, very stable. That's owing to the fact that those motors are kind of bowled in. More about that when we get to tuning in a minute. Now what I'm gonna do here is show you, if I move the stick now in, in acro, it wants to stay where I point it. And other than the fact that it's kind of a bowl-shaped copter and is a bit self-returning anyway, it wants to fly away. I put it in stabilize, as I've done now, it much more aggressively turns the level. So I bang the stick away, and very quickly comes back to that level point. Now our other mode, I gotta go a little higher to show you. So I'm gonna come out here where Alex is a bit excuse me there, buddy. And we're gonna get right about there. Now again, even in stabilized, it'll stay where you put it, but there's a little bit of winds. As you can see, it's kind of drifting away. If I flip the switch again, Loiter. now it's in loiter mode. So now the GPS is actively attempting to hold position. Now with a little more tuning, I could get this a bit better, but as you can see, he's just hanging out. He's changing altitude a little, which is something I need to set up on the altitude PIDs, which I will show you. But other than that, he's just kind of hanging out. And he'll just more or less stay where you put him made a tiny throttle change there to stop that consistent climb he was doing. As you can see now, actually, it's pretty spot on. He's just chilling right there in that spot where we left him, which is very, very cool. Now, I'm gonna go back to stabilize mode. Stabilize. And you'll see he starts to descend a little. That's because it remembers where I positioned that throttle a second ago. Now, what I'm gonna do, try something a little bit brave here. I'm gonna fly out to the end of this taxiway you can see in front of us here, and I'm gonna hit the return to home switch. In a perfect world, the copter's gonna come back I'm not sure if it's gonna land or if it's just gonna come back and hover here in front of us, but one or the other, it's gonna do something. Okay, that's where I'm going. And I'm gonna throw the return to home switch now. Return to launch. And apparently, is it coming toward us or is it trying to go back to farming? Coming, to coming toward us! Oh, it went to its minimum altitude for movement. Look at that! It's doing what it's supposed to do. Are you gonna stop or are you gonna soar over us? Nope. There it is. And so as you can see, he has returned to launch. He's come back to us like he's supposed to. He was hovering. Now he's gonna execute a landing. It's kind of amazing when this stuff works like it's supposed to. I'm not doing that, for those of you wondering. Look at him go! I'm not gonna touch him, I'm all the way down. That was not me, boys and girls. It's not me. I love it when they work like they're supposed to, guys. That is the reason for return to launch. You turn return to launch off, and away he goes. That is absolutely epic. So a little bit of uh, confidence inspiring, really, because wherever you've armed the copter is where it's gonna come back to. So knowing that means I could fly over here and just kind of blast off into the field someplace. And if I'm like, oh, crud, I've lost orientation. I don't know what's going on. I just throw that switch. First, it's gonna go to the preset altitude so it doesn't hit anybody in the face on its way back. And it's gonna fly back and land just like it did before. And at any time during that motion, oh, oh, I'm good, I know where I'm at now. I'm back to, I'm back to normal. I can return to flight, throw the switch, and take back over manual control. And there you have it. Let's back and stabilize, as I said. Set her down right where we started out. Hold the disarm. Wait till the prop stop turning and you were good to go. Guys, that went about as well as I could possibly have hoped. That's super awesome. Let's go back to the studio. I'll show you how to set up and tune this thing, make it that good. Here we are back in the studio. I promised a few hints and tips about tuning this thing. It's flying really, really well and I wanna show you guys how it got that way. Uh, I think earlier in this episode, I mentioned that you were gonna load the defaults and that those work pretty well for APM and you can generally just fly that way. I was totally wrong about that in this copter because as I mentioned, it's kind of bowl shaped, the props are turned up. It has a kind of a tendency to stabilize itself even in acro mode and that fools APM a bit, gets it a little confused. You need to use much, much higher PID values to stabilize this thing. Now, one of the interesting things I learned uh, from looking at that uh, Arducopter site we showed you earlier that gives you hints and tips for tuning uh, was that the best way to tune APM is actually a little different 
from most multi-copters. Most of the time you do your uh, essential PID tuning in acro mode and you kind of stabilize from there and then you work on your self level. Turns out that the guys from uh, 3D Robotics, the APM fellas, recommend that you start out by tuning in stabilize mode. So that's what I ended up doing to make this work really well is just put the copter in stabilize, you take off and you keep adjusting the values. The values that you need to adjust right here on the top of this extended tuning screen in Mission Planner. Stabilize roll, stabilize pitch, stabilize yaw, and loiter PID. Those four numbers across the top are the most important tuning figures. You're gonna start out with that stabilize P and stabilize pitch, uh, you know, the roll and pitch number kind of low and keep inching those up. Now, the APM guys recommend a value between 0 0.8, or sorry, 0 0.08 and 0.25. I ended up having to go all the way to 2.8 on this copter to get it to fly well. So again, you know, take off each time, raise that value, and what'll happen is when you first start flying, the copter's really numb and stabilized like it was when I first flew this one, and you have very little control. As you raise that number, the control gets sharper and sharper, better and better until you can fly. That was what I needed to do for this S500. Once I got that dialed in, you guys could see how well it flew outside right now. The only other thing I would change is this loiter PID that's here. When you saw when I flew it in loiter mode, it wanted to kind of climb a little. I'm gonna increase that loiter PID a little bit at a time, keep trying it outside until it stops climbing in loiter. That'll be great too. Guys, that's gonna do it for this. This is episode one of the APM quad. I will be bringing you another episode on this very quad really, really soon. I'm gonna go into more advanced tuning on APM as also uh, show you guys the waypoints and the geofence and all those other cool features. I'm really confident that this is working well now and I can show that very easily. So we're gonna get out and do that really, really soon. Don't worry, I've still got fixed wing coming. Anything else going on this series, if you have questions, guys, throw them in the comments here. I will try to get back to that, answer anything for you. Right now I'm gonna go out and do some more flying because this is way